What do you say, baseball fans? Rye Bread talking baseball, episode 41. It's jam-packed today, so we're going to just stick with our normal format. East-West, some picks. I'm jumping in on that unwritten rules garbage. And then we're going to look at the pitching matchups today. There are quite a few good ones. So, East-West last night, Rays announced their presence with authority in Baltimore and just five bombs. That's enough. Zanino's hitting... Long home runs. He picked up his young pitcher. The stuff is there for Patino. He's just a young pitcher. He was throwing sliders last night that were pretty gross. I'm excited to see what Patino is going to do. And it does not look like an accident that he pitches on the same night as Blake Snell every night. But Snell got through six innings and looked great. So... If he can strike out that many guys and be that effective, that's great. But it's Colorado, man, against good teams. I just would love to see him pitch to contact more. I went and got his card on Major League Baseball uh, 2021, the show, because I got a lot of love for the guy. I think he's funny, but and I like his talent. He's fun to watch. It's just It seems like he could be so much more effective pitching to contact. But we covered that yesterday. Tonight, you've got Yarbs and Means. It seems... Weird to me that they continue to start Yarbrough, even though his numbers with an opener are so strong. Maybe they're trying to get him over that stigma, and they want him to step up and be a starter who can give him five or six every night from the jump. I like his stuff. He doesn't overpower anybody, but these guys that are ready for 98 all the time, see Yarbs spinning him up there every once and again, it's not easy for them. So when he's hitting his spots and he's got a good umpire... It works. But if he's getting squeezed and it's a tight umpire, it matters for Yarbrough. Which it shouldn't be the case, but that's how it goes for him. If it's a wide zone and he gets that east-west strike, he does very well. He can nip. But tonight's the night for Baltimore to get a win if they're going to get it. John Means, say no more. As cold as the Rays were for that stretch they've just completely rebounded and are on the other side of the pendulum now just scorching hot three run bombs the meadows these guys were just crushing <clears throat> choice back look no further than why the rays are doing great g man doing work but 13 6 rays and that's a nice way to start your series yankees beat texas they've got kluber going tonight Against undecided, we expect the Yankees to continue to win. They're good. The Yankees are back and doing what they're going to do. Kluber just needs that kind of run support. If you give him seven runs, you're probably going to end up on the right side of that. Kluber's still a quality major league pitcher. He's not what he was, but he's still going to give you quality innings. And if you back him with seven, six runs, you're giving yourself a great shot. So the Yankees are still tough. Boston and Toronto last night was the game. <laughs> I was I couldn't turn away from it. It was like a, a train wreck for the Red Sox. Just a million tiny cuts, base hit after base hit after base hit. As the Jays were going opposite field, taking what they were given. I don't want to hear any more about this ban the shift. Hit opposite field knocks all night like the Jays did. They're not going to shift that team as much. It'll take another, one more game like that, or even that might have been enough, showing how often the Jays were early in the count, looking for strikes out over the plate to just drive against the shift. And they were base it, base it, base it, double, base it, base it, double. Story got started. I think it was Jansen, Danny Jansen. And then after that, Hyunjin Ryu stayed hot, and the Jays are tough. They still haven't gotten anything from Springer. Dolis is back and healthy. He looked good. It was a great opportunity for him to come back and get his feet wet. And as long as the Jays are wearing those slick blue unis, I'm in. <laughs> I love it. And the black matte, or not black, like the matte colored helmets without the shine on it. It's just such a nice touch. Those unis are spectacular. And they're in Dunedin, so you know they're playing home games for Boston. If it's in Dunedin. But we love the Rays on this show. Renfro did ew, Renfro things last night. Air mailing one. He's got that great arm and he will get people. But he sent some kind of change his mind at the last minute throw into third base. Two runs come in. It That was not great. But he's going to get more than he gives. 
with Renfro and the amount of people that don't run just because it's Renfro, you're going to have to put up with that every once in a while. Tonight, it's Garrett Richards and Ross Stripling. It's a good chance for the Red Sox to get going, but I've been watching the Blue Jays a lot, as you know, if you've watched any of this show. I've been following them pretty closely, and they're just dangerous and relentless in the same way that my A's are dangerous and relentless. Oh, We'll get to the A's to finish up the East-West thing here. Seattle got no hit by the Tigers last night. What? Not much you're going to do there. We're going to get to Spencer Turnbull in the superlatives. The Angels lost, so we won. And it's just more bad news for the Angels. You're going to have Mike Trout out six to eight weeks. If Mike Trout's out six to eight weeks, you're already seven games out. You don't get better when Mike Trout leaves your roster for the injured list, especially for two months. So if the Angels climb their way back from seven games out and are somehow in a position to make a run when Trout comes back, you're looking at Shohei for MVP just on that. Because I don't think there's a whole... Rendon and Upton are great players. I really like those guys. Walsh is coming into his own, sure. But it's not going to be enough, man. Not in that division. Look at how Oakland and Houston are playing against each other. It's getting rough for the Angels, and this slow start is going to come back and bite them. Because if they were up or near the lead, and then he went down for two months, speaking of Trout, and you stay afloat, you're a couple games out, that's something that you can manage. But you're already way back. And even if you stay seven, eight games back, and it's the end of the summer, and those teams, the A's and the Astros, are playing like they are now. Look out, man. That's a tough road to climb. And we haven't even mentioned Seattle, who's been good. It's looking tough for the Angels, and we're going against them today. Shohei has only factored into one decision. He is amazing. His ERA is two. Something minuscule. When he's pitching, he's awesome. But how much can you expect from the guy? He's carrying all the water for the offense. And what, if you get five out of them, six tonight, you're ecstatic. That's even if he's in the lineup, which I don't expect him to be hitting. And they're facing up against Aaron Savale, who's tough against righty uh, hitting. So you're going to have Rendon and Upton kind of neutralized, leaving Walsh as the dangerous bat there, the dangerous lefty bat for the A's. So... Man, it doesn't look it doesn't look good for the Angels right now and that bad news has to be demoralizing. You might be able to get up, we got to do this one, but man, that's demoralizing news to hear Trout's out 6 to 8. But Mr. Majestic is our everyday father. We should just do the Mr. Majestic moment from every day because Shohei Otani does something amazing every night. That home run from last night was beautiful. It's like a work of art. You do a painting of that thing. He's a face of the franchise type of guy that's going to be able to step to the front now that Trout's out for a little bit. So we'll see if Major League Baseball puts some extra marketing on Shohei because he's just the man. There's no other way to say it. Shohei Otani's the best baseball player in the world. He pitches like this and hits like that. His hitting numbers are good enough to put him up there in the conversation of some of the best hitters in the game, top 10. And then you look at his pitching numbers and you combine them. I mean, as far as one individual talent, I mean, come on. There's nobody close. There's nobody close to that guy right now. Maybe it would have been Yanoa if he hadn't uh, broke his hand. But Otani's your MVP if the Angels are in the playoffs. And right now, I don't think that's going to happen. This rough start is just going to do him in. Again. Again, you're going to have a postseason without Trout and Otani, it looks like. I know it's early and it's doom and gloom, but my goodness, man, I haven't seen anything from them to show me otherwise. And the A's and the Astros are showing me games like we saw last night, where Loriano can just do it himself. Knocks in three and scores three. They got six. I'm not a math major, but three plus three equals six, and it was the Loriano show. Man, that guy's amazing. Dynamic player. What an exciting player. Last night's game was back and forth, back and forth. Just what you want. 
And then your boy Dallas Braden says, how about to pull the trigger on the first pitch fastball here? Boom! <laughs> man, it was an exciting game. It was just so nice to cross-pollinate, man. I'm telling you, I'm all over these other games. The Rays game was over early because it was a stomp show. Tony Camp, Superman. He's a tougher out than his number indicate second baseman, Tony Kemp. He made a sprawling diving catch last night that's just a out. Defied the laws of physics with that one. It was an amazing stab. Tucker and Olsen, I had to say it because I watched this game pretty. They went to a very deep part of right field last night. Deep parts. Because that building is a, <laughs> it's a mess out there. Hitting home runs at Oakland is hard enough, but you go to that part of the yard? Man, those were some titanic blasts. It's Grinky and Montas tonight. Grinky's been pretty much what you would expect. He's not blowing anybody away, but he's getting you quality innings. And I like Frankie Montas. And I like the A's. I'm not betting this. It's a coin flip game. But I'm an A's fan. And when the defense comes up big in the sixth inning with that 6-4-3 double play, and then they got another one from when Roma was on the mound. He threw it from his hindquarters and found they were in the shift. I don't know how it went. It went one something three. And th- that was two huge defensive plays that kept them in it and gave Loriano time to carry the entire load with that sacrifice fly to do it. I was all over that game and love every minute of it. The great call doesn't hurt. But it's all Loriano there. And tonight, I wouldn't be surprised if the A's did it. Are you surprised that the A's have five walk-off wins at this point in the season? It's Whenever you see it, especially at Oakland, whenever you say, oh, hey, the A's came back late and won, big surprise. It's They do it so regularly now that, or in my socialization, when I think of the A's, They're usually winning a game or coming back and winning a game late at their place. The image is just there. I love the A's. I really do. The rest of the league actually plays baseball. I know I spend a lot of time on that American League East and West, but those are just such awesome games. We had to touch it. The bets we'll get to in a second. I want to jump ahead to that unwritten rules thing. Come on, man. Let's go easy. Guys are out there playing baseball. When the position players are on the mound, like was the case when this big fiasco happened with the White Sox and now you've got the manager, La Russa, calling out your mean Mercedes. Your mean Mercedes took the long road to the major leagues, man. The long road. Independent ball. I mean, really worked his tail off. And you're going to berate the guy? And then... When it comes contract time and they're trying to get his numbers up there on the screen for them to poke at, give me a break, dude. Not even close. We got to get way past that. It's dumb. It's dumb. But La Russa is doing something right. They're in first place. There's a lot of like, oh, what's La Russa doing? Uh, they're in first place in the American League, not just their division. I mean, sure, he didn't know the rule about that second base thing. I didn't know that. I'm not a major league umpire. I mean, a major league manager, somebody in his orbit should have known that. But man, winning is a gorgeous cologne. Smells fantastic. When your run differentials off the charts, you're spraying the ball all over the yard, scoring runs, winning ball games, even though Giolito hasn't been Giolito yet. Man, go easy on calling for the guy's job, but it's a bad look for Larusa. I mean, nothing good to say about it, obviously. And your mean Mercedes should hit as many home runs as he can. Because every home run that guy gets is gravy at this point. He's not just some rookie. I hear people calling up this rookie business. He's not just some rookie out of the box. I was a 23-year-old PFC. I know what it's like. People make assumptions about your age, thinking you're some 18-year-old chump. He's not. He's almost 30. Your mean Mercedes is not your average everyday rookie. And we're getting off this unwritten rules baloney and going into the bets got marlins plus 110 at efflin zach efflin got beat up last time we actually took the phillies i like efflin as the pitcher but marlins plus 110 with rogers rogers has four wins in his last five starts not the team one he got the w and the team one 
And when you're playing for the Marlins without Starling Marte, that's not an easy task. So, normally, you would expect a pitcher like Rogers to be expensive. But he's the dog here. And I think the reason for that, if you make Philadelphia a home dog to the Marlins as a wagering community, you're going to be so exposed on a Marlins win that you have to sweeten the number. So that's what's happening here. Because Eflin's good, but Rodgers is excellent. Top tier. Top 10 pitcher easy. He is one of the best pitchers in baseball right now. So you're getting him as an underdog, and I'm not passing that up. So even though Eflin's got a 3.86 ERA, I think the Miami Marlins can scrape by. They have Jazz Chisholm back in the lineup, and he's dynamic. He changes that team. And when Marte's in the lineup with Chisholm, then you're really cooking. Got yourself a stew going. But with Jazz back in the lineup, I think they can scrape a couple across, and I'm looking Miami here. And I did a last-minute ad bet. I'm taking the Indians. I'm taking the Indians. 5-1 and one, Aaron Savali with a 3.4 ERA against Shohei Otani, who is amazing, but it's factored into only one decision this year because he can't do it all. And I don't think you're going to see him in the lineup today. That leaves Jared Walsh, the lone dangerous lefty in the lineup against Savali. And Savali's good better against righties, so you can neutralize Upton and Rendon with the righty on the hill. And I just see Cleveland's better than people think. They're not great, but they're a lot better than people think. They win a lot of games. So, as good as Shohei is, I don't expect him to go that deep in the, into the game. Even if he can give you six or seven. What have you seen from the Angels bullpen to lead you to believe that that's enough? So, you're basically relying on Shohei to carry you. And then, if he is in the lineup, which I don't think he is, to knock in all your runs to. I, I, I don't see it for the Angels tonight. And getting that rough news on Trout. That's demoralizing, man. And we said it was a rough look with thing what happened with Pujols and all that. I don't think they've had a whole lot to cheer about except for Shohei. And I just, I'm just i sticking with the Indians on that. We're hot. We've only lost one of our last five bets. We'll see if we can keep that rolling. Other pitchers that are going today that we like. Giolito, I'm looking in on it just to see if we're going to find the Giolito that we expected at the beginning of the year. Because he hasn't been that guy. I expect Chicago to handle the Twins. I'm not <laughs> taking the Twins. I can guarantee you that. They're struggling. Mets and Atlanta. Don't count out David Peterson. Morton looks like the tastier option here. But there's a reason why I couldn't find this line. And it was a little bit off. Morton will pitch brilliantly for five out of six innings. And then have one inning in there where he gives up four runs or three runs or something like this. He has been bitten by that big inning frequently. That happened a lot when I watched him play for the Rays. My dad always pointed that out to me too. Like, oh boy, where's the big inning? So, and sure enough, it would happen. So Morton's just incredible. And then you, he, the wheels come off and then he puts them back on and usually gives his team a chance to win. I'd love to have him back at that salary for the Rays right now. I'd love to have Morton on the team. Absolutely a major league pitcher with great stuff, but he has that big inning. And if the Mets are going to get you, that's how they're going to get you. So, and David Peterson is just a lot better than what is indicated. He was great against the Rays. They didn't win that game, but he was still good. And we bet against him twice and lost. I'm afraid of David Peterson, as you know. And then don't forget, you got Scherzer and Arietta. Scherzer, just appointment watch television. Corbin Burns at Brad Keller. You know we watch Corbin Burns when Corbin Burns pitches. And we still have the Brewers. If the Brewers are getting healthy right now, the Cardinals left a door open going out and getting swept by the Padres, so I'm not off the Brewers. My real problem is just that NL East. I don't know. NL East, I don't know either. It's Yankees, Red Sox, Rays feels like it, but look at how Toronto's playing. With their million little cuts going oppo and getting some timely pitching. I love it. The superlatives, of course, 
We were talking about Snell yesterday. He got through six. Good to see that Snell's putting it together a little bit. It's no accident, like we said, that he's lined up with Patino every night, I think. Spencer Turnbull, eighth no-hitter in Tigers history. As a Tiger fan, I love it. I happen to be up watching baseball late. That Houston and A's, Houston and Oakland game kept me awake. And then there it was. I was able to, to see Turnbull do that. Just gives you the chills. And we would be remiss if we didn't point out the evening that Miguel Sano had. Oh my goodness, Miguel Sano hits a no-doubter down the left field line. Then puts one to the deepest part of the yard. And then goes oppo. And in the broadcast they say, no part of the yard is safe with Miguel Sano. And he beat us before with a home run. But the big fella was mashing last night. And we expect more from that great slate tonight. We'll be all over it. Went a real long today. We'll see you again tomorrow. We're going to do 162.